this is the Redmi Note 10. Refined design, new camera arrangement, and the first in the Note series with an AMOLED screen. We are going to review it, unbox it, and I'm going to share with you things that nobody has ever told you about this phone. Is it worth it? Should you buy it? And everything you need to know about this phone right after this break. Okay, welcome back again to Smack the Pot and the Redmi Note 10 is here. Now, this one has been making wave around, so let's check what's inside the box and let me share some insights with you about this phone straight out of box you will see the phone itself with information written on it underneath that is a manual what i call the condom case and sim ejector tool and inside also is as expected a usb type c but what many didn't expect is 33 watts fast charger right out of the box i believe many apple users would be impressed by that but what didn't impress me is the back cover, which is plastic, um, which is a fingerprint magneto. But I'm actually impressed by the arrangement of the camera and this. So let's fire it up and check out what's inside. Inside is my UI 12 Android 11 and it is quite interesting. Here is a quick spec sheet at a glance. The design language has been redefined from Redmi Note 9 and even the camera arrangement has moved to the side which I like. And then that AMOLED screen, the first in the Redmi Note series, man, it's been a long time coming. You can see richer colors, you know, and then great viewing angle. Even under the sun, you can, you know, use this phone on the direct sunlight and it's just good like that. I like the design, the build quality. The user experience, if you're already used to my UI, is great. <laughs> but if you're not used to my UI, it might be a little, you know, learning curve. So that's my UI 12 and it's Android 11 and the gestures is just sweet. Uh, using app, switching apps, scrolling is just fast. The Snapdragon 678 kind of impressed me. You find this phone to be as fast as any mid-range when you are using it. But when it comes to the call, it takes it to the next level. When you turn the volume of your call to the highest, the earpiece now combines with the top loudspeaker to give you a rich sound even when there is noise. And that is a premium experience on this phone and I like that. There is the infrared uh, for remote control. You can control your remote TV, refrigerator, anything that has remote control. You can control it from this phone. And before I forget, the side mounted fingerprint on the power button is blazingly quick, very, very fast. But one thing that didn't work at all for me was screencast, you know, and I don't know whether it's due to Android 11 or MIU, but it just didn't work on this phone. The audio experience from the stereo speaker is premium. Now, one in this will be very loud and I'll leave you to check it out yourself. So that's it, you can be the judge by yourself, but not just that, the Bluetooth connection, uh, music playing is great, um, the signal strength of Wi-Fi network and making calls even from Bluetooth was just so good without any stress at all. Now let's move on to the battery life. Of course, it's 5000 milliampers, it's Snapdragon processor, you expect it to have a good battery life. But for me, I think the battery life is great. On a heavy use, it can carry you for a whole day plus. If you are a normal user, it can take you two plus days. I got uh, 10 hours uh, screen on time with heavy use and that is beautiful. For any other person out there, it could mean two or three days of battery life. So the battery life is good. 
Talking about the camera, I didn't know what to expect from the main camera because it's an older sensor. There's that reaction uh, with light, you know, when you just, you know, tweak it to some light. But let's just go in <laughs> to the camera, the main sensor, the Sony IMS582. Uh, it's just stood out for me on this one because the detail is there, you know, rich details and color accuracy. There's a little bit of saturation in my UI, uh, you no know, profile for picture, but the front camera, 30 megapixel, did so well. I mean, I was like, <laughs> what will it come up with? But then it did good for a 30 megapixel. Of course, the pixel count is not everything. There is the pro mode where you can actually tweak the phone and, and you know, set some things and shoot it the way you want. There is the wide angle. There is the different different uh, settings you can do and above all there is gcam 8.1 with wide angle macro and the main camera working well i didn't tweak it i just took pictures with this the macro and it did well imagine what will happen when i start tweaking it of course you might want to subscribe if you want to see that and let's see some pictures from the miu main camera I'm going to do this is a wide angle and then the next is macro but I'm going to do a wide test now one was shot with Gcam one was shot with Miu can you tell me the one it is I'll put the answer in the description so check that out okay so now the one that is more interesting for me is the video recording this video recording 4k on 30 fps it doesn't have uh, electronic image stabilization so i just want you to feel what it's like recording 4k without a stabilizer or without a stand so it's gonna be shaky but the 1080 uh, uh, p videos are stable so you can use that but I think the video recording is good too, so there's nothing to worry about this. And talking about video performance, I did an export here, rendering 4K, and I matched it against uh, Snapdragon 730G from Remy X2. And believe me, this phone, you know, stood the test. It went toe to toe with the premium mid ranger and a better GPU, a better processor. But one of the things that I'll have to explain here that gave it advantage when it came to this rendering is the UFS 2.2. The UFS 2.2 is faster than the UFS 2.1 in the Realme X2 and some other uh, older device. So keep that in mind. It will give you advantage to apps opening, uh, to reading, writing, copying things inside your phone. So keep it in mind. I was very, very impressed. I thought the Realme X2 would blow this guy away, the 730G and the GPU, special GPU. But the difference was just a few seconds, about four or thereabout seconds. And that is quite impressive. So I really, really recommend this phone if you are a multitasker, if you somebody who just don't want to break the bank and get a good phone i will recommend it just because of that ufs because this is the effect here <laughs> you know punching it ways above itself because of the fast read and write which becomes important in real day real life use like this but then you see it now it just finishes up but of course we're going to go benchmark let's do some benchmark Okay, so now notice because I couldn't, I installed Entity 3D, uh, the full one, it didn't work. So I have to now open the app and then it downloaded the Entity uh, 3D Lite. And that means I couldn't get a good score for the GPU. So um, the score here, it's a little bit without the real GPU test. So, but as you can see from the rendering test, the GPU is not bad. So this is the anti two benchmark scores. Um, and if you see the details of the results, you will discover that there is no score for GPU due to uh, anti two not downloading the, you know, the big 3D tests. So let's go to Jigbench also. This is it, uh, very, very respectable score there. And finally, let's go into gameplay with PUBG. So now I'm going to tell you some things that nobody have told you here when we go into the game.
but first of all let's go and bump up our graphics to the highest we can and that is smooth ultra and i'll take the temperature check i'm actually inside a uh, ac you know a room uh, room temperature of 25 degree so i don't expect it to be very hot here but let's look at how smooth this thing can be this 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 phone is good it's good and this is on smooth ultra so let's go in and play some game you can see the gameplay is smooth it's actually very smooth when you start playing the game but if you play up to 20 uh, 15 20 minutes it's it's gonna lag a little so i'm gonna try to see whether i capture that so a little bit after 10 15 minutes the temperature rise wasn't so much but now if you see now the speed of the running i'm on full running now but it's not as fast as it should be because i've played up to 20 something minutes of gaming here going to 30 minutes so it's a little bit slow and okay. if you're not strong game it might actually affect your performance so um i wouldn't say this is a purely gaming phone but it can actually game the hardest uh this the highest graphics uh, game but if you have this issue you can just bring it down to uh high and not ultra and you'll be able to game and do whatever game you want to game with it so it still keeps it at high so that's it the temperature didn't go all that exceedingly but um, the battery temperature did hit up to 41 which is high so here is my closing thoughts let me start from the storage the ufs 2.2 storage is great and the processor is good uh, the gpu is a little bit not good i will recommend this for purely gaming phone you might need to step up a little bit to the 7 series but it can actually keep its own as you can see i did talk to you and other stuff like that in this phone so for me it's it's also a very good value for money phone so the battery life is good i talked about that in the video the battery life is good uh, 10 hours plus uh, screen on time the downside is the plastic at the back and the fingerprints um, you know it comes fingerprint so you just have to clean it up and then sneak it into this condom case to make sure you are well protected yeah yeah so that's it uh let me uh, know what your mind is in the comment section and um, like share the video and until i see you next time peace subscribe i see you